our final storyteller of the evening. I'm so excited um, for you to hear this storyteller. His secret fact is that he doesn't like white chocolate or dark chocolate. He only likes milk chocolate, or as he calls it, brown chocolate. Uh, and he's worried that that makes him a little bit racist. Please welcome Amish Patel. Marsha, everybody, give it up for her. Yeah! And for yourselves, sticking it out, unlike these guys, look at them, they took the best seats in the house and they left. Uh, where did they go? Um, anyway, guys, my story is about uh, the first time I fell in love and the first time, like, I did stuff, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it all happened in grade two, so, yeah. Uh, and it all happened in Brampton, uh, which is where... Which is where I grew up. Oh, nice. Good response. Uh, usually people, when I tell people I'm from Brampton, they're like, yeah, obviously, sure. Uh, yeah. You, and the sky's blue. Whatever. Um, but uh, it's weird. Like, I, so no surprise that I'm from Brampton. But it was, it's weird. Like, I was actually the first brown guy in Brampton. And, um, and when I was a kid, like, people were super racist. And, uh, and like, there was, like, two ways that I could walk home. So there was, like, my school... Like, like, imagine you're looking at a map. So this is, this is my, my school. There's a catwalk, and then there's two ways you could walk home, right? And then this is my house right here. So this is, like, the road around. So on this corner, there was, like, these, this, like, racist family. And like I said, I was the first brown guy at Brampton. And they would call me a packy, which is awful, right? It's, terrible, it's racist. So um, I would go home and tell my dad. I was like, Dad, let's go, let's go fight these guys. What the fuck, right? <laughs> and uh, my dad was, like, a grown-up, and he had real problems. And uh, he's a struggling immigrant and all that. And he would be like, uh, uh, Tell them you're from India. They don't, maybe they don't know, so tell them. Like, like my, dad, my dad thought they were saying, hey, go back to Pakistan. And then I was going to be like, actually, we're from India. And then they were going to be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. How rude. How rude. Tyler, Corey, let's go study a geography textbook. But it's so weird. Like, I knew that first neighborhood was ghetto because, and the reason I told my dad, um, and, and the reason I knew that the neighborhood was so ghetto is because they would say it, like, right in front of their parents. And I'd be like, hey, hello, what? And, you know, and the parents would be like, whatever, man, don't worry about it. And, and like, I was like, and so that's what made, gave me the idea to tell my dad or whatever. But um, anyway, it's all a happy story in the end. Because, like I said, they lived on this corner. Um, and then there was, like, a catwalk in the middle. And I was scared to walk home, uh, I remember. Like, one time they, they, they did it, and they kind of chased me off. They would throw rocks, stuff like that. And, uh, and, and I was like, okay, I can't walk home that way anymore. And uh, I was scared to, so, so, so I'd, I'd kind of pace back and forth in the catwalk. Like, I'd kind of go back and forth, and I'd kind of peek down, and I'd look the other way. Like, the other way looked so far to me. Like, as a kid, like, this way was, like, the way I walked, and then this way was, like, mystery land. Like, I don't know, like, it just looked, like, miles away, and, like, I won't get home until, like, 5 o'clock. My parents will think I'm dead. Like, who, like, who knows, right? Like, it'll be crazy if I go that way. So uh, I'd keep looking out, and, and I'd, I'd come up with these ideas. I was like, okay, what if I snuck with a crew, you know? And then I started sneaking with a crew, and I remember I saw them. And they would all, like, when I, I was a fat kid, right? And I'd see this crew of guys that were in that, that, were in that house. And they were all, like, they were, the, this is the thing with that family. No one wore shirts in that family. Like, no, everyone was topless. And as a kid, you don't know. Like, skinny people, like, they're probably scrawny. But skinny people, you think they have muscles. And, like, fat people... Whatever. So I was just like, terror. I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. So like, I I tried to sneak over with a crew, and I remember I ran back to the uh, to the catwalk, and I was like, this is crazy. I can't, I can't go home like that. And then I'm kind of like just pacing back and forth, and then that's when I saw like the most beautiful little angel. Uh, she, I think she was in grade four. Uh, she was a little bit older than me, and uh, you know our our eyes locked, and time stood still, and um, and I fell in love, and. And I also gained carnal knowledge, which is, uh, sounds awful. I, I was in grade two. I was, I was in grade two. But it was, like, it was like, you know when you're in grade two, like you have that realization, like, okay, I, I get it. Like, grown-ups do, like, we got to do stuff. Like, I didn't know the mechanics of it, but I was like, we're going to do stuff, and it's going to be great. And, um, you know, like, I knew. I, I, I was like, I, I, I know what they do now. You know what I mean? Like, not specifically, but, like, I know there's, you know, some stuff going on, and we, we, we have to do this now. So... <laughs> I'm kind of like, she's walking out, and she goes the long way, right? And until now, my brain's telling me, like, you'll, that's too far. You'll, you won't get home until forever. Um, but now, of course, my brain's like, it's not even that far. Whatever. Like, just go, right? So I start following this girl home, um, and, uh, which sounds bad right now, but uh, wait for it. Uh, and I'm following her home, and, uh, and I'm trying to do this thing where, like, 
like, like I'm speeding up to her like really fast, and then I'm like just walking, like whatever, like just in case she like turns around, or whatever. And I and I was like getting like really close to her, and I was I, didn't, I wasn't like gutsy yet. I was like, okay, what do I say? Like, do I do I say something? And I, I'm having these ideas, like I'll, I'll run across the street and I'll like catch up to her and be like, oh hey, catwalk, remember? Like something something like that. But um, I'm trying to think of like how am I gonna catch up to this girl? And I remember she stopped and like I freaked out and I like jumped behind a, a green box. And I just waited there, and uh, I kind of peeked out eventually. I saw like she went into the corner house. It was like a it was like a block parent house, and whatever. That day I walked home, and then the next day uh, I kind of did the same thing. Like this romance was just developing here, right? So I'm 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 like okay, I'm waiting for her in the catwalk. I'm trying to make it look like I'm looking for something. I don't know. Like I I just I don't know. even in grade two like I knew like I needed to like be cool and like pretend like I was just hanging out and like oh okay cool like yeah let's walk home now or whatever right? Um, and so. So, but she was like, she was into it too. Like, I remember we, we, we saw each other, we started walking, um, like she would be, we, 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 I remember we, we did this thing where we would kind of walk past each other until we kind of stopped and then we just held hands um, halfway to her house. I know, it's very sweet. And, um, <laughs> and I remember we got, like the first day we got to her house and uh, we were kids so we didn't even know what to do, yet, you know what I mean? So we just kind of stood there. I think we stood there for like 20 minutes, just not knowing, like, what do we do? Like, we just didn't want to go home, but we didn't know, like, what you do now. So we just, like, stood there, like, holding hands, like, two goofs and whatever. Like, we waited. Um, and then that day, like, I kind of went home. Very, very, I was very happy. I was very excited about this, uh, obviously, right? So the next day, or, like, in the coming weeks, like, I don't remember exactly, but I remember she took me to her house. Her mom was a block parent. She would just parade me around. She'd be like, Amish is my boyfriend, and we're going to do, like, we're going to hang out, and we're going to play house, whatever. And we would just go, like, and her mom just was, like, liberal and just cute. It was like, oh, you guys are adorable, whatever, right? And, like, we would go into her room, and she totally did stuff. Like, I didn't do anything, but, like, she would totally, like, she was, we were kissing and stuff. It's weird. I know it's great, too, but whatever. But she would totally, like, like kiss and, like, lie down on top of me and be like, this is what adults do, whatever, right? And uh, I loved all of it, you know. I even loved that she had, like, all the dolls and stuff. My parents were too cheap to buy me, like, the big dolls, and she had, like, houses and, like, the cars and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, we had, I, I loved, I loved her. We had the greatest time for, like, I think, like, a week or two weeks, probably. In my head, it felt like a whole year, but, like, it was probably, like, a, a couple of weeks. Like, we hung out every day, um, and my parents never knew. Like, it was weird. Like, to this day, I'm not allowed to have a girlfriend. It's so weird. Like, I'm in my 30s, right? <laughs> I still don't tell my parents if I have a girlfriend. So even then, like, she would tell that her parents, like, I have a boyfriend, whatever. And I'd be, I, I remember being so proud and so ashamed at the same time. Like, if my parents found out, I'd be like, ugh, whatever, right? So I'd go home, and um, I'd go home, and I remember, I remember my sisters and my, and my mom would, like, they would just ask questions. Like, they, like, 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 one day, one of them would come home early. I'm like, hey, where were you? I'd be like, what? What are you talking about? I don't, I don't have a girlfriend. What? Get out of here. Like, I don't know. <laughs> What do you, and, you know, and they, they, like, try to get my, no, I'm just asking you, like, where you were. What, what are you, a lawyer? Like, get out of my face. Right? Like, I, like, I was, like, I was very, like, I remember being, like, yo, just don't, don't mess with my, you know, my happy place. You know, I want to keep that separate from you. You know what I mean? I didn't like, you know, whatever, that mixing up. And uh, anyway, I kept, I kept walking home that day. We kept doing this. And uh, I remember I heard that, like, we were moving away. And I was so, I was so upset, like, when I heard it. Like, it broke my heart, and I was like, we're moving away, and I'm trying to ask, like, without saying I have a girlfriend, I want to stay in touch with someone here, I just was asking, like, oh, so, like, move away, but, like, we come back here sometimes, right? Like, we, like you know what I mean? Like, we go to a new school, but, like, some days we go to this school, right? Like, something, right? And, like, my sister's like, no, we're leaving. Like, we're, we're out of here, whatever. And, um, and the thing is, like, like it's such a ghetto neighborhood, and, you know, I wish I could say that we lived there because we were poor. We were never poor. My, we lived there because my mom was so cheap that she lied to all of us and made us think we're poor. Like, she's not, she would hide stacks of money in the walls. She was crazy, right? Um, and I remember one day, I'm, uh, I'm so, so like I said, it's like my school's here. I'm waiting to go into the catwalk. Like, I'm going towards the catwalk just to have, like, a lovely night with my girl, you know, the way I did every day. And I hear my sister yelling for me, and I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, please tell me. And I, like... Looked and I just did that thing where you're like, okay, I didn't see that. And they're yelling, Amu! Like my nickname's Amu. I don't know why. It's like a, it's a weird thing. My name's Amish. It's a simple enough name, but they just call me, my family calls me Amu. And uh, she's like, Amu! Oh, and I'm like trying to like, like escape into the catwalk. I'm like, if I get in the catwalk, we'll be at her house in no time, whatever, right? She runs after me to get me. She's like, hey, we're going, whatever. We're going to the store, right? My mom 
This is, this is like uh, an example of her cheapness. She drives us to bloody Scarborough, like takes me away from my girl, drives us to goddamn Scarborough to get 50 cents off a box of Tide. I swear to God, she always do this, this bullshit. And I remember when we were kids, like it would say like limit four per customer. So she'd put me and my sisters in separate lines. So like, honestly, like just like, and, and I remember the guys like, and we would do two rounds of this. And, and the guy at the store is like trying to give me a hard time about it. And he's like, you know, I have a manager. And I'm like, dude, I live with her. Just fucking deal with her. And, and my mom always did this goddamn thing where she would tell, like, she would do this guilt thing of, like, like, like the store guy was, like, getting mad at her, like, ma'am, you can't do this, and it's limit, whatever. And, and she would do this thing where she'd look at the guy and be like, I've seen poverty. Okay? I've seen poverty. And, like, like I said, she, like, here's what she never told anyone. She's seen poverty. She's never been poor. She saw poverty from the third floor of her bloody mansion in India. She would see, like, down there, there were poor people. It was ridiculous, right? And I didn't know this as a kid, but my sisters told me, and I was so mad that we're moving away, that, like, as we're moving away, we're, like, fixing up the house or whatever, and I just broke all this stuff, like, in the backyard, like, all this, like, styrofoam insulation. I just broke all of it, and I was like, oh, mom, I hate you, you're the worst, and I broke everything, and I love her, you don't know, and, like, I'm just, like, fueling this, uh, this, like, taekwondo, and I'm taking it out on these, uh, this styrofoam. Anyway, it costs, like, tons of money, and, like, whatever, but we, like, it's so weird, because, like, I, I still remember... You know, like I couldn't get out of it. Uh, I couldn't get out of moving away. Uh, you know, my dad and my my mom, my, my my mom and dad and the contractor, like contractors, like you know, like you've wasted all this money. My sister told me this later. Like she's, they're like, you broke that. Like that was thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And the contractor's like giving my parents a hard time. My dad's like, honestly, like I don't know, what, like I don't know where we're gonna get the money for this. And of course, my mom like it clicks in, like, oh, like she's pretending like she doesn't have money. And then like you know when you lie to yourself and then you're telling people the truth. You know what I mean? Like she would do that a lot. But anyway, the truth like, kind of clicked in in her own head, like, hey, there's, like, $10,000 in the wall, like, you know what I mean? And it just, like, clicked, like, oh, yeah, oh, okay, wait, wait, let me, oh, there's money here, and, like, she, like, whatever, they paid the guy, and it all worked out, and we fucking moved away. I was so mad, though, because I remember we were in this giant station wagon, we're driving away from my house, I'm crying, I'm, like, looking, it was so dramatic, because, like, the station wagon that we had, it had the seat that, like, faces backwards, and I just sat alone in the back, and i crying, and seeing my house shrink, and um, that's my story, guys. That's it. Like, I, <laughs> that was a really depressing first time I fell in love. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amish Patel. He's so good, right? Yeah. Another one. <laughs>